Alright guys, welcome to another beer review and uh, today we're going over to the wonderful Dea and uh, this is a can of the Sunglasses which is a pale ale clocking in at 4% ABV and uh, let's see, so this is described as a crisp clean pale ale uh, but then it's also described as unfiltered, unpasteurized and unfined naturally soft, hazy and juicy so of course uh, these guys are out of uh, Cheltenham. Is it Cheltenham? No, not Cheltenham. Yeah, Cheltenham. Jesus, Peter. And uh, yeah, actually went up to the the brewery and tap room um, when us UK beer tuber folk were meeting up in Birmingham. And uh, gotta say, one of the best tap room visits that I've ever had. And do you know what? Even just the price of the beers is absolutely amazing. One of the best breweries in the UK. In fact, I did a whole week dedicated to Dea. So uh, if you're interested, the the whole Dea playlist on it is going to be in the comments. But yeah, fine Tramil cans are really affordable, um, especially when you get it from the source. Uh, get it on tap. It's just absolutely out of this world. Highly, highly recommended. Um, and even you know, spending a, a long weekend in Birmingham, you know, you, you're guaranteed to have a really good drink and loads of great places. So yeah, looking forward to this one. I picked this up whilst I was in Manchester. Um, I think this is it called the Beer Box, which is in Hatch, uh, which is a wonderful little space uh, with sort of like freighter, no freight containers. What are they called? Shipping containers. Um, which is yeah one of those go-to sort of let's build a commune stuff uh, very similar to what you find in like Grub um, in their newer location and of course you know if you go to Berlin uh, there's BRLO which just looks absolutely insane um, but yeah it was really nice and I was very very pleasantly surprised to see some Dea in the wild in Manchester uh, I think I paid just over five pounds for this so you know even still um, just excellent bang for your buck on this and uh, artwork on this can comes from Tom Hobson beautiful beautiful design I love that the wave um, I can't remember what is that piece of art that that's uh, inspired slash lifted from I can't remember I love it though the, the painting yeah, it's iconic you all know it even if you don't know its name so this was canned on the 21st of June 2019 uh, it's about the 5th, well it's not about the 15th of Ju July, it is the 15th of July. Uh, you might see uh, the remnants of uh, fried noodles and egg, or egg fried noodles. Uh, I love just getting like cheap but tasty instant ramen. Cooking it just under the amount of time you're supposed to boil it in the water. Drain all the water, let it cool, maybe rinse it. You know, so you get rid of the starch. Then just throw in a frying pan with some chopped garlic and ginger. Very simple stuff. It's completely bastardised the Asian food culture, but it tastes good. So it, uh, yeah, it's spilled all over me, which I'm very surprised uh, that it's not all over this white t-shirt. And I've just realised this uh, video is staged absolutely horrendously, uh, much like my hair today. So uh, yeah, so pretty damn fresh. Uh, not. Harry Blue Nose Beer reviews fresh, uh, who has become my uh, my hookup for oh, there you go um, for Daya. In fact, waiting on an order uh, that I made with him, uh, but he's enjoying himself in Asia uh, with his uh, lovely girlfriend. So I'm not going to worry too much. So yeah, I've actually got a couple of cans of uh, was it Steady Roller Man or Into the Haze coming my way as well as two Treehouse beers. But uh, anyway, don't want to brag. Even though he, a lot of that stuff is a bit more accessible now, especially with the trading scene and uh, the bottle share culture. Which I'm actually going to my first uh, proper bottle share um, with, the, uh, with Rob from Hop Scene. And uh, it's one that... Uh, Beer Nomicon are hosting at Beer Moth. So looking forward to that. Don't know what I'm going to take yet though. But anyway, let's worry about this beer. Or that, let's not worry about the beer because there's nothing to worry about. Uh, it looks wonderful in this glass. It's got a very pale, hazy look to it. Uh, it's got that, you know, classic chicken stock, maybe even a bit of like uh, if you were to 
smash loads of um, lockets, honey and <laughs> lemon lockets, and get the uh, syrup out. That's what I'd imagine it looks like. It looks like a um, mixture between peach compote. My head's not in it today. Uh, peach compote and lemon curd, but yeah, really nice looking. But a nice sort of pale powderiness. And uh, two figures worth of a really fluffy white looking head. So it looks the part. Let's see what we get on those. I don't know why people watch this channel. Oh, so good on those. Loads of sweet, juicy fruits coming through. There's a really nice citrusy element. If I'd had say it's more along the lines of like a, a sherbety citrus aroma. But then of course it's backed up by mango, peach, papaya. Lovely herbal edge as well. Oh, it just smells wonderful. Loads of blood orange on this, I would say. And it's like that almost like a seasoned spicy savoury edge to it. But it's not like, you know, the typical onion and garlicky sort of. Yeah, it's got like a spicy oriental edge. And now it's not just because I've had noodles and it happens to have uh, Asian inspired artwork on the can. Uh, which is actually probably playing a little part in that. It's all about your mindset at the end of the day. But yeah, it's smelling really damn good. It's reminding me of Yuzu actually. That um, Northern Monk uh, Patrons project that they did with, um, was it Finback? I can't remember. Which uh, they brewed in with um, the ramen bar in Manchester. What's it called? I can't remember. Never been. Keep wanting to go, but I feel a little bit of a dick going to like a ramen place on my own. But yeah, it's got like an oriental yuzu edge. Anyway, this smells lovely. But it's really nice and fruity. And it's not one of those beers where when you open it, you just smell it instantly and then taste it. Well, I don't know yet. I have not tasted it. But I always get that when I get like a really in-your-face, you know, hazy, hoppy IPA that just fills the room and just gets your saliva glands going. And then you take a sip and it's like, yeah, it's all right. But this, each sip you, you smell, you take, it's just lovely. Anyway, I've waffled on for way too long. Let's give it a taste. Cheers. Ooh. Now that's interesting. That's actually a lot more savoury than I was expecting it to be. It's got the sort of like flavour of um, like tobacco that's dried out a little bit, you know, they're, they're without the, you know, without it being like lit up. And you get the leaf. Almost has a bit of a uh, like you're smoking a spliff almost. You get that herbal vegetative aspect. It's a very Vegetative, I would say. I know that's not the proper word, but I don't know what the word is. Yeah, it's very herbal. Very herbal indeed. The, like, tropical fruits that you're getting on those do not translate into the beer itself. But yeah, there's loads of citrus bite in this one. But it's not as sweet and as sherbety as you'd think from the nose. Yeah, and it's a very rounded, savoury, hoppy herbal IPA. Really crisp. <laughs> it's still got a bit of bulk in the body. It's not the heaviest beer you'll have, body-wise. But yeah, it's got like a real classic element to it. Um, I'm reminded of, you know... You know, the big classics like uh, Rebel IPA. Uh, well, not so much Rebel IPA. That was a stupid one to mention. But, you know, the stuff like Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. That's what it's reminded me of. With just a bit more oomph to it. I mean, it's a lovely crushable beer. 
It's not the most exciting or satisfying beer that I've had from Dea. But this one has ones where if you could brew that, you would be dead happy. Do you know what I mean? So I'm not going to shit on it too much. We have spicy tones coming through. See, I reckon this would be wonderful with like um, like deep fried chicken. Do you know what I mean? With a bit of batter on it. Or like a nice chicken salad. That sort of cuisine. You know, the sort of outdoor summery foods that you can eat. Because I think that, that it's got a really refined spiciness to it, which I've, I've not really had too many times in a in a pale ale. But then you get the sharpness of like a lime on the back end. Lovely amount of bitterness. Yeah, it's something a little bit different. Do you know what I mean? There's there's things in it that I just can't put my finger on uh, without it sounding like um you know detracting from the beer, which I'm not. It's it's lovely really really is still not upset about how much you paid for it do you know what I mean um, would I rush out to get another can of this not really um, I think just by the sheer amount of beers that they are brewing and like you know their core sort of beers like a steady rolling man just is a banger every time But yeah, it's, it's got like a classic American style pale ale vibe about it. With just a bit more haziness and a bit more bulk. It's not the fruitiest IPA or pale ale you're going to have from Daya. It's not the boldest. It's not the most in your face. It's not the sweetest. It's actually really a lot more bitter than I was expecting it to be. Which I love. I really enjoy when I get a really nice bitter pale ale or IPA. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'd really rush out to get another can of this if it was offered. You know, if a fucking six pack of this was offered to me on it all day, mate. You know what I mean? But yeah, as it stands, I'm sat in the garden. It's a little bit cooler, just about the right temperature for me to justify putting on a sweatshirt, sitting outside, getting a cheese board, some uh, cured meats, stuff like that. It's going to complement. You know, brunch or broth site sort of uh, dishes. Just a six pack of this. Go to your new supermarket. Get yourself some rye bread, some uh, you know cream cheese, cheese platter, meat board. And just chill and enjoy it. That's that sort of beer. Perfect beer to have food with, I would say. And if you've got any spicy food, I think there are elements in this beer that are going to complement that perfectly. I say I probably should have had this when I was having me, you know, ramen noodles. But yeah, there's, there's definitely something Asian about it. I don't know what it is. People say it's the power of persuasion and that sort of thing. But I don't think it is. I'm not going to... I won't accept that. Um, you taste it, you'll know what I mean. Well, probably not. My palate's stupid anyway. So, yeah, in terms of a rating then on uh, Sunglasses by Daya, 4% ABV Pale. It's just, you could get yourself into loads of bother with a beer like this. You really, really could. Uh, I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. Um, it's not really blowing me away. It's not a really excited beer. Uh, it's not Daya's best, but, you know, they can't all be bangers. Do you know what I mean? There are always going to be some beers that you'll drink, and they're not hitting the high notes that you're expecting. It. And I think that's what I'm getting with this. But they are still one of the best breweries in the UK. One of the most consistent breweries in the UK as well. And such a small operation, great value for money. How can you go wrong? Give 500 mils. Why can't more people do the 500 mil cans? Just give us that 60 milliliter more. Please. I love this stuff. Seven and seven and a half out of ten. If you tried it, let me know your thoughts, opinions down below. Uh, Daya's links are down below as well as uh, Tom Hobson. Uh, go check out my day a week playlist and my general day playlist. And uh, yeah, you'll be seeing a lot more beers from these guys on the channel. 
And uh, yeah, paying just over five quid in you know, the centre of Manchester for some day. -er. Hell yes. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you've tried it, let me know your thoughts, opinions, and uh, hopefully you'll join me next time for a much better review. Cheers, guys, and you all take care.